Hello sweetest potatoes! Welcome back to our New Year Reset series. Last week we reflected on 2021 and identified three intentions we want for 2022. If you guys want to do these worksheets in order, which I do recommend, pause this video, finish the first worksheet, and then come back to this. But if you're like Rowena, I don't care. Just tell me how it can reframe and master my mindset because I need it. I need it too! keep on watching. <laughs> Before we start planning and setting goals for 2022, I think it's important to take a step back and check in with our mental space. How's everyone doing? How's everyone feeling? Are you guys excited for 2022? Are you guys burnt out? Are you guys dispirited from all the ongoing uncertainties or maybe even not in a mood to be productive but clicked on this video anyway to see if you can shift your mindset? I found it very reassuring while I started researching for this video that no matter where we currently are in life in this very moment, our realities are not fixed and we're all more than capable of learning how to fulfill our potential if we're willing to put in the work. And don't take this from me. Take this from the mother of mindsets, Carol Dweck. Although the beliefs we adopt for ourselves profoundly affect the way we live our lives, which make these beliefs very powerful, they're just something in our mind and we can change our mind. How powerful is that? We've talked a lot about mindset habits over the past couple of years. Bing! But, Taking a step back, what is the mindset? Why is it so important? And how do we even arrive at a good enough mindset where we're in a decent mood to actually function as a human and do things like plan for the new year and achieve our dreamiest of dreams? As with all the videos in the New Year Reset series, you can reset any time of year, so don't worry if you're watching this months after January. To accompany each video, there'll be a Notion worksheet you can duplicate as well as challenges and meetups in our online productive potato community on Vibely. Everything will be linked in the description below. Quick shout out to Notion for sponsoring this video. As you guys may know, I take my productivity tools very seriously. So seriously that I dedicated a whole video to my favorite apps from 2021 and of course Notion made the list. They're an all-in-one workspace that's super customizable whether it's for personal work or hey, your planning. Like this template I've created for this series or this worksheet we'll be using today. You can organize your whole life, design your dashboard with your needs and aesthetics, and create an entire system that works for you all within the app. I'll link a few videos down below on how I set up my life dashboard, including tutorials, as well as how I run my whole team on the app. This time of year, or any time of the year really, is a great time to revisit your productivity tools and feel just, just absolutely smitten by your processes. I mean, I don't know if you guys feel the same way as I do about productivity and all that, but guys, if you haven't checked out Notion already and you're interested, you can sign up using the link in my description box now. How do we reframe and master our mindset? To start, what is a mindset? A mindset is a self-perception or a self-theory we hold about ourselves. For example, I'm intelligent or I'm unintelligent. I'm creative or I'm not creative. I'm capable or I'm not capable. We can also have mindsets about our personal or professional lives. For example, I'm a bad student or I'm a good parent. Mindsets are something we can be aware or unaware of and they play a huge role in determining whether we succeed in anything and everything that we do from personal to professional growth, to relationship, to friendships, to parenting, to finances, to basically every dimension in our lives is encompassed within isn't that crazy so why is having a good mindset important if our thoughts make up our mindsets watch your thoughts they become your words watch your words they become your actions watch your actions they become your habits watch your habits they become your character watch your character for becomes your destiny. Despite conventional belief, and I think this is something what most of us believe in, is that success stems from innate abilities, innate talent, innate intelligence, and education. But through extensive research, Professor Dweck found that success actually comes from having the right mindset. Isn't that crazy? Now that we know what a mindset is and why it's important, let's dive deeper into the two most basic mindsets. Come travel back in time with me to a memory that's been living rent-free in my mind. It's the summer before my senior year of high school. I've been playing volleyball on the school's team for three years now. I'm currently on junior varsity, soon trying out to see if I can make the varsity team. Well, I knew I wasn't the best player, probably wasn't like the best top five, ten players. I knew, or I thought I knew, I was decent enough to make the varsity team. Until one day, the varsity coach pulls me aside and proceeds to shatter my ego. He said, Rowena, your jump serves are all like floaters. Your spikes aren't that powerful and you're not great at defense or setting. What are we gonna do with you? I nodded, continue on with the day's practice, went home and proceeded to never show up again 
for practice. Might as well quit while I'm ahead, right? So the reason why I've been thinking about this memory a lot is this is textbook fixed mindset. Believing your innate abilities like intelligence and talent are fixed and are carved in stone and you can't change them. Up until this point in my life and for many, many years to follow, whenever I was faced with a challenge, I would give up because if I can't be the best at it, why even do it at all? Bless our soul. If I can hop in a wormhole to go back to that summer, I would first and foremost thank my coach for giving me feedback. He was probably trying to see what I would do with this feedback. And I would ask him if he saw potential, if he saw room for improvement, where I can improve and how I can train so that I can be better. This is the second mindset, the growth mindset, believing that our abilities can be cultivated through effort, hard work and help from others. I can use every situation as an opportunity to learn so that when I'm faced with challenges, I can persevere because it is through challenges that we grow. Looking at fixed and growth mindset side by side, I think it's it's actually fascinating. Fixed mindset is limiting and you believe my abilities determine everything, while growth mindset is freeing and you believe my efforts and attitude determine everything. Fixed mindset is outcome driven or destination driven. Growth mindset is process driven or journey driven. The journey is the reward. Fixed mindset is validating yourself. Growth mindset is developing yourself. Success for a fixed mindset is proving you're smart or talented and being smart, while success for a growth mindset is stretching yourself and becoming smarter. I think this quote is no words. So good. Becoming is better than being. The fixed mindset does not allow people the luxury of becoming. They have to already be. When I read this, I got shivers down my spine because yes, manning perfection for myself falls under fixed mindset. Okay, three more quick examples. I feel the thing worth highlighting here is the failure part where for a fixed mindset, when you fail, you take it as a very personal thing and it becomes your identity of I am a failure versus a growth mindset. It's more of an action of, oh, I failed and this is something I can learn from. In short, fixed mindset is I can't do it. Growth mindset is I can't do it yet. All right, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hug, 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 hug. That's the end, <laughs> just kidding. So after going through all of that, which mindset do you identify with the most? It's actually very normal to have a combination of both. You can be fixed in one aspect of your life and have growth in another area of your life. Okay, you may be thinking, this is great and all Rowena, but what do I do with all of this information? How do I actually reframe and master my mindsets and go from a not so good headspace to a much better headspace? Here's the good news. Simply by being aware of the two mindsets can help you to start thinking and reacting in new ways. And here is the fun part. Notion worksheet time. You guys can also take out a piece of pen, a piece of pen and paper, a piece of paper and pen. We're going to travel inside our craniums and observe the fixed mindset voices that live in our mind actually rent free. I, I said that memory lived in my mind. No, these fixed mindset voices live in my head. All right, so step one is to identify the fixed mindset voices. Whenever we're not in the best mindset, if we take time to ask ourselves why we're feeling the way we're feeling, we can usually trace it back to some sort of setback, conflict, or disappointment. We'll be going over five scenarios scenarios. When I'm faced with blank, I tell myself blank. For this exercise to be helpful, really take the time you need to answer the questions, whether you want to pause after every scenario or you want to listen to all five scenarios and then pause. While I was filling this out, I thought back to very specific scenarios, actual memories when I faced challenges, when I faced failure, when I faced criticism, what were my default responses? And I wrote it down. It's good to be very specific right now so that when we reframe later, we know exactly what we're reframing. So here's some examples. The first thing, when facing a challenge, what do you tell yourself? I don't think I'm smart, talented, creative, or strong enough to do this. What if I fail and everyone sees? When facing failure, what do you tell yourself? Yep, I'm a loser. I've known this all along. Great, I just wasted my time. Might as well quit now while I'm ahead. When facing a conflict or feeling left out, what do you tell yourself? Everyone hates me. I'm not a lovable person. When facing criticism, what do you tell yourself? It's not my fault. Who do you think you are? You don't know me. Don't tell me what to do. When you make a mistake or do something wrong, what do you tell yourself? Wow, I'm so dumb. I can't ever do anything right. How many guys identified with these inner voices? 
All right, step two, recognize that we have a choice. Now that we know how we talk to ourselves, am I happy with how I'm talking to myself? Is it serving me? I'm no sidekick, but I'm pretty sure most of us wouldn't want to talk to ourselves the way we've been talking to ourselves once we've written it out or typed it out and actually seen how we communicate with ourselves. I was pretty surprised to see that most of my default responses were fixed mindset voices. This is what I was saying earlier about how my day-to-day -day voices are fixed while like bigger picture things, it's more growth. I'm very harsh on myself. I demand perfection for myself and a part of me still cares so deeply about external validation, which all ties into the fixed mindset. So moving on to step three, shift our mindset from fixed to growth. Now that we're more familiar with our fixed mindset voices, it's time to start reframing them into growth mindsets. In here, I'm giving you guys two examples for every scenario, but you really only need one. There's always that one dominant gut instinctual default response when something happens, I would highly recommend pausing the video right now because if you don't do it now, you're probably not gonna do it later. Pause this video and really go through all five scenarios and every single fixed mindset and reframe it to a growth mindset just to kind of get yourself in the mood and in the habit of, okay, so this happened, Here's my default response. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't think that way because that's a very fixed way of looking at the situation. How can I growth mindset this? Moving on to step four, choose what you want to work on. So of all the fixed voices, whether it's the one you hear the most or one you want to work on, what is the most important mindset you like to reframe? Check it below in the Notion worksheet and move on to the next step. The last and final step is to put it in action. What can you do to remind yourself to put this mindset shift into action? The first step really is self-awareness. Think of it this way, meditation, constantly bring yourself back to the center, like your mind wanders, okay, come back. Your mind wanders, okay, come back. As with most things in life, this really is like a muscle you can work, carving the neural pathways in our brain. The first few times you do it, it's kind of strange because you're like, oh my God, I've never done this before. Where am I going? But then the more you do it, the deeper the neural pathways become and the more second nature it becomes and the more natural it'll come. To make this more actionable, you can put it on your calendar to revisit your mindset reframe every single week. When you're planning for the week this is also something you look at to be like okay if this happens and i think this here's how i can reframe it you can also put up a post-it note of the reframe either on your mirror or put it on your computer so that it's something that you see throughout the day so that when something happens if something happens you can be like oh Yes, I should refrain from fixed to growth. You can also keep a journal. So whether it's a daily journal, a weekly journal, or a monthly check-in where you sit down and you kind of reflect on, okay, the past day or the past week or the past month, this scenario played out. My default response was this. It was more fixed oriented, but here's how I try to reframe it to growth. So final words from Carol Dweck. When you catch yourself passing up a chance for learning, believing you're a failure or getting discouraged when something requires effort, you can try switching into the growth mindset to take a challenge, learn from quote unquote failure and continue to try. So the main takeaway for me is truly enjoying the journey, progress over perfection, enjoying the journey versus being fixated on the destination, having the courage to keep trying, having the courage to keep practicing, having the courage to keep showing up, even though you may not be the best, but we all start off not being the best. I hope you guys have a much better understanding of what it means to have a good mindset. At the core of all mindsets, the mother of all mindsets really is being able to differentiate between growth and fixed, every single mindset video I've made is taking something and reframing it into a growth mindset. Anything can happen to us. It's how we react to it through more of a growth mindset that allows us to live a much lighter, grounded, happy existence. And with that, thank you guys for watching this video and thank you again to Notion for sponsoring this video. If you guys were inspired by how the worksheets work, how the worksheets work, how the worksheets work, and you want to try them out, every Everything will be linked down below. And with that, vlog channel content's coming real soon. A new Voice Hugs podcast episode have been up, so make sure to check that out. And yes, we'll see you guys next week to talk about goals, values and goals. Bye-bye. Look at my cute shirt. <laughs> All right, bye-bye.